This video is brought to you by Battletested Film Gear for all your tips, tricks, tutorials, and tools. Check us out, battletestedfilmgear.com. Hey everybody, so today is GH4 day. Well, it was last night. They announced all the specs and all the details about the GH4 and what it's bringing to the table. And uh, we are super excited to hear all the details, except for the fact that it's actually shipping next month and they are announcing the price next month. Other than that, we have a lot of things to talk about and think about and stew over and have buyer's remorse about other cameras we've bought. Yeah, maybe not, we can talk about that. But anyway, so let's talk about the, uh, the new GH4 and what actually what was announced compared to the rumors and <clears throat> how that affects us. Okay, we're not really talking about all the detailed specs because that's something you can go look up on the other websites. We're going to be talking about how that affects us as filmmakers and shooters, what the Lumix GH4 brings to the table. First and foremost, what we've all been talking about, commenting about, whatever, is the 4K. And yes, they come and they deliver us awesome, beautiful, 4K in such a small form factor. Speaking of the form factor, the GH4 will f is, you know, everyone said, oh, the GH4 is just a GH3 with a sticker on it. Well, it's true, it is, which is actually a good thing because then they just, all your camera can just fit on all the other rigs that you happen to have built for your GH3. So all, everything you've had that's the right size and everything is gonna slide it in and fit. There's some caveats to that, but we'll talk about it in a second. So. 4K in your hand, ready to go. That's awesome. Uh, you stick the battery in the body, you stick a card in it, and you're capturing 4K. Is it the uncompressed 10-bit we all were hoping for? No, but at the same time, it's under $2,000 and it's gonna give you an awesome 4K image. Lumix has, you know, they've, they've done a really good job at keeping uh, uh, their quality up as they've progressed through the cameras. They haven't had to start over with a new sensor every time. Speaking of which, the camera actually has improved quite a bit. There's uh, new, new processors, better, uh, there's less rolling shutter, better low light performance, especially on the still side, really high ISOs, which doesn't affect us as much if we're just shooting video with it. But back to the 4K. So to capture 4K on the GH4, you are gonna need, or sorry, uh, you're going to be shooting at 100 megabits a second on, on an H.264 codec. Again, it's not the 10-bit and 422 uncompressed, or not, that's not uncompressed, 422 we wanted, or even uncompressed, but you could jump out of your car, van, whatever, <laughs> and be shooting 4K in a, in a blink of an eye. Shoot your kids in 4K. So that's, gonna, that's very good news. I'm very excited about that and happy with it. Uh, one of the settings, if you want to up your bit rate, you can uh, up your bit rate to 200 megabits a second and drop your frame down to uh, 1080p, which is essentially a 2K frame. And that's going to look very nice as well. Uh, one of the things that, that was done with the GH2 and GH3 was obviously hack them and really be able to crank the bit rate. The bit rates on these guys were just ridiculously low, 17, 24, compared to 100 and 200. Uh, so you're going to be looking at some really good images, especially when you're looking at things you don't need to deliver in 4K or need to, to really uh, post-process quite a bit. We just finished the color, actually finished the film that we shot on a couple of years ago on two of these little guys before there was even hacks out for them. So we want to do a project. We thought, okay, let's do it uh, super cheap. Uh, the GH2s are looking nice. Let's shoot on two of these. Kept the crews small. It was great. I'll have to put a link to that or something like that. Um, so anyway, Thinking of that nature, um, jumping out and just shooting something and having a, a 4K image that looks nice, I'm very excited about that. Now moving on to the 10-bit question. I am inside crying a little bit that we don't have 10-bit in the palm of our hand. Or do we? Oh, thanks Blackmagic, but we're not here to talk about them right now. We're talking about these guys. So, um, to obtain 10-bit off, off the uh, GH4, you're going to have to come out of the HDMI into some kind of recording device because it sends a clean uh, 422 10-bit, bypasses the, pro the processing inside the camera and goes right out the HDMI. So that's a very cool solution. You're going to have to get yourself a Ninja or an Atomos Ninja or a Focus Enhancements or Blackmagic Capture Device, etc., etc., to get that 10-bit uh, signal out of the camera. So you guys are used to that and you're fine with it. Me, I'm more of a, I like a, to be a purist, I like to have all my, my camera system kind of be in one 
small package. If I'm going to buy the camera, I'm buying it as much as I can to use uh, um, on board instead of going out to a thousand peripherals. That's I'm, I'm kind of old school like that. The old camcorder days or the old uh, you know the ENG cameras. All right. So how do I get uncompressed out of this camera? Because uh, everyone's saying I can get uncompressed. For two grand, under two grand, you can go 4K, uncompressed, 10 bit. Well, they're being a little misleading because to get uncompressed 10 bit out of this guy, you're gonna have to buy their big old fat um, chassis that the camera will sit in, which is actually pretty cool. I think after looking at it, I thought, you know, that's actually pretty nice. I have no idea what the price is on it. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be cheap, but it'll give you XLR inputs. Uh, it'll give you um, the HDSDI so you can go 10 bit uncompressed out. So, in conclusion, you need to ask yourself what am I so excited about when, it, when I look to buying a camera like this? Well, 4K, obviously a good thing. Can I work within the 100 megabit uh, range of quality on there? I, I think so. Uh, it's only a matter of time too until somebody starts hacking this thing and we're getting in there. Uh, and then we're limited by the uh, SD cards and data rates and things like that that the uh, computers can handle inside the cameras. But um, that's, that's a very, very exciting prospect. <sighs> Secondly, um, am, I be doing, am, I, am I doing films? Am I doing commercials? Am I doing documentaries? What is the result of what you're doing going to need at the end of the day? You have the 4K resolution regardless of what you're doing, 10-bit, uh, or you can do tons of post-processing, whatever. You still have that 4K resolution to work with. Um, now, let's really quick, let's move on to, I don't want this video too long, but let's move on to really quick, I said buyer's room. Did I say buyer's remorse? I don't remember if I said it or not. One of the previous takes I may have. Am I going to have buyer's remorse now that I've, I've bought the Blackmagic camera or a Sony or whatever it is, and, and now that the GH4 comes out and I have all these other potential, uh, or I have the GH4 as a potential option instead of what I've done before, I held up the Blackmagic. Um, now for me, again, the two things that I find important are the 4K and the 10-bit uh, image processing at bit depth, which is awesome. And that's one thing that Blackmagic does really well is it does a really awesome 10-bit flat image that you can do anything with in color. So I'm going to call these things apples and oranges in a lot of ways. Can you shoot on a film on both of them? Absolutely. Could you just walk out the door and start shooting on this one much easier than this one? Yes, you could. Can you uh, do much more color and post-processing on this one than this one? Absolutely. Is this one going to be 4K? Yes. 1080p? Yes. But again, it comes down to what you're going to, and, and the comments, you guys are so correct. You've been saying this in the comments this whole last couple of weeks. It all comes down to what you're going to be doing with it. I always try and shoot high and then bring it down. But nowadays, you have to decide what your high is. You know, what is, what is the, the best quality capture that you're going to be obtaining? I have people who just swear by the Alexa because it is the most beautiful colored camera in the world. It shoots at 1080p, a really good 1080p. We have people who just love the resolution of the Epic and the new sensor, the new Dragon. Uh, they just love the 6K, whatever it's gonna give them. And they're not too worried about the color space because they're gonna be doing so much post-processing anyway, et cetera, et cetera. So it really comes down to, again, your preference and then obviously budget. You know, you gotta spend a lot to get this guy up and running as a, as a camera that you can use for more than a couple minutes. This guy, you could pop out and just start shooting right away and you could have a film. So really, awesome, awesome news for the GH4. Will I be getting one when it comes out? I believe so. And um, will I be getting all the peripherals to, so I can be capturing 10-bit uh, uncompressed? Probably not because I have other options for that. I'm lucky enough, you know, I have a Scarlet. I have some other options. That's going to be upgraded to the Dragon pretty soon. I have other cameras that are also meeting the needs that I need on certain particular times. So leave it up to you. Rate, comment. Well, don't rate because I don't want thumbs down. I'm kidding. You can rate whatever you want. Um, but uh, yeah, comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, again, I'm super excited for Panasonic and what they've done with the specs. I think it's going to be an awesome camera. I think it's going to fit right into our systems that we have put together already. I, I still enjoy the Micro Four Thirds format. I really enjoy uh, the lens choices and things like that that you can do. Um, I'm, I'm waiting for the Metabone Speed Booster, though to go from the Canon, I'm a Canon guy, so I don't have any, any Nikon glass. The Canon uh, 
EOS uh, FD, not FD, sorry, um, EF mount or whatever it is to the Micro Four Thirds so I can use all of my, my glass on these cameras because you can use them currently, but the speed booster would make it that awesome th um, uh, Super 35 frame, which would be make all the lenses that much more useful. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, let's all be excited about the GH4, shall we?